Okay, week 18, under pressure and fluid motions. So this week is all about air pressure and um, fluid and how particles can move freely. This um, lesson plan does a really, really cool thing where it um, talks about the story of Nicodemus and it weaves in air and how you can't see air but you know it's there. And it's just really neat how it brings in the Bible right here. So. Anyway, there's kind of a quick introduction where you talk about Nicodemus for a minute, and then you do the very first of three activities. So these are all demos, but you're going to be able to talk a lot with the kids about it. So I have this just to protect from an accident. But So the first thing you're going to do is take a jar, and you can put, put water in it. It doesn't matter. It says a third fill full, but we I tested it out at home, and there's no such thing as too much. You're going to put an index card over it, making sure that the index card is completely covering the opening. And then you're going to flip it over. Doesn't matter really how fast you do it. And then you can let go. I've never seen this before. I thought it was very cool when I did it. So while you're holding this, you could talk about, and by the way, there's a really great picture in here that, that shows how the air pressure is pushing up. Um, while the water pressure is pushing down, but maybe while you're holding this and the kids are looking at it and um, being in awe of it, you can be reading about how air pressure has a pushes down on us and all around us with a force of almost 15 pounds per square inch. So that means that the air is pushing up on the card at that same at that same force, and water only pushes down on the card by a few pounds per square inch. So air is much stronger than the water. So that's why this works. Even if you fill the jar completely, it still works. And you could try that. You could do that. I'll have extra cards. You can absolutely go nuts with testing if the amount of water matters, but you could maybe do that after you've done the other things. So anyway, so this is the first one. I'll just flip it. Whoop, there it goes. All right, put that aside. So the second one is seeing fluid motion in water. It talks about all gases are fluids. This means they're a type of matter whose particles can move freely. So we're going to kind of show that by filling this jar with water, mostly. And then it says to put the jar in front of a piece of white paper just so that it is more easily seen what is what is going on with it. So I I just bent a couple pieces of white paper so that it would stand up. It says add an ice cube or two and then one drop of yellow food coloring. So it says, do you see the food coloring moving around the jar? How is it moving? Is it side to side, up or down? So you want to have the kids, you know, really close, maybe kind of down at the eye level with the table so they can see really well what is going on. Um, if you watch carefully, you'll be able to see the areas of sinking water and areas of rising water in the jar. So now we're going to add <clears throat> two more ice cubes. And then we're going to add a drop of blue food coloring. And we're going to observe how the blue spreads out. So it explains that the food coloring went down because the cold water from the ice is dense and it sinks, while the food coloring went up when it was warmer water that was less dense and rose upwards. So since water and air are both fluids, air will do the same thing as water. Air will rise when it's warmer and sink when it's cooler. So I guess that's what you're supposed to be seeing. You're supposed to be seeing how the yellow um, food coloring went back up, I guess, because it was warmer and the blue food coloring went down because it was cooler. So that's what you're hoping you will see through this thing. So let's set that aside. The last thing is burning incense. <laughs> so I've never lit incense before, but the person I got these from told me how to do it. 
and you want to um, catch it on fire and let it burn for a minute and then, and then you want to gently blow it out. If you blow it too hard I think it sort of puts out the burning feature but anyway okay so it is burning and there is smoke not a good deal though I may have not done it right because it's not smoking because I guess if you do it right then it's supposed to smoke let's see I mean, it's burning on the tip. Okay. You have to look pretty closely, though, to see the... Let's see if I put it with my shirt. Yeah, you can see the smoke. So, um, it tells you to hold it still so that the students can see the smoke. And you want to observe that the smoke moves straight. Well, we observe where it moves straight versus where it will swirl and become turbulent. So it's straight, like straight off, but then it, then it gets turbulent. So, um, so it's doing the same thing as the food coloring was. In our atmosphere, when air gets warmer, it rises, and when the air is cool, it will sink. So it's, it's warm right here, which is why it's going up, but then it cools off as it goes down, which is why it starts swirling and going crazy. So it goes into a little bit more detail, but when it's time to put it out, just dunk it in water so that it will definitely stop smoking. I don't think this, this provides enough smoke to be an issue. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll be right about that. Okay guys, that is the end of week 18 and the end of quarter three. Thanks.